afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for letting me come. My name is Dave Phillips. Um, I am an assistant professor over in um, physical education and human performance. I am from England. I've been in the States for about 15 years. <clears throat> this is the smallest college I've ever worked at. Uh, previously, I was at the University of Utah, uh, University of South Carolina, and Florida State. And now here I am here at SU in the world of the city. <laughs> and so I have seen uh, the college soccer across the United States, uh, both men's and women's. Uh, before I lived in the United States, <clears throat> I worked in England. I was a PE teacher, so my background is in physical education. But I was also working as a professional soccer coach for a plethora of professional soccer uh, clubs in England, um, some of which were in the Premier League when I was working. So my background in soccer probably is kind of fairly legitimate, I'm a fully qualified coach, yada yada yada. I've got my PhD in exercise and sports science, but what I am not is a sports psychologist. But I do teach the sports psychology classes. So if you are looking <coughs> for to work with a sports psychologist, you need to find somebody who is licensed, and I am not your guy. Does that make sense? However, I have enough of a background to be able to spend some time with you to suggest some strategies that you can use to improve your game. Now, sports psychology is only about 40 years or so old in terms of it being a professional occupation. It's only since the early 1980s that um, some international teams, when Canada were in the Olympics, um, and they qualify every now and again apparently, when Canada decided they wanted to adopt the first ever professional sports psychologist. And as we've begun to know more about the profession, and we're learning more about the brain, and we're learning about more and more about how the mind controls the physical, that there are more and more spots for people to work within the profession. Does that kind of make sense? So that's where I'm at. <clears throat> and now what about you? Well, I have a handout for you today, which I'll probably give to you at the end of, of um, the presentation, which is just going to take just a few minutes. It's just for, uh, I just want to give you some, to encourage you to practice some strategies if any of you, and I'm sure this is none of you, have ever experienced stress or anxiety. Okay? Does that ring true with any of you? Okay? Yeah, what's that? Okay. So this is what we know about stress. We know that stress is a physiological response. We also know that stress is a psychological response. And we also know that stress is coming your way whether you like it or not. Whether it's in the classroom, whether it's with your significant other, or lack of, that might be providing the stress. <laughs> whether it's you eat the wrong foods, whether you sleep at the wrong time, whether you've got too much studying to do, whether you're under pressure to perform, whether you've got a big game coming up, and everything from that perspective will affect you when you're stepping over the white line. And this is the difference between soccer and all those other ridiculous sports that you play in America. In America, I play for 10 seconds, I sit down. <laughs> yes, I'm not talking about soccer. <clears throat> I play basketball for, thir for 30 seconds, I sit down. I'm not a defensive player, we're on offense, so I sit down. I swing the bat at the ball, and then I go and sit in the dugout. I'm on offense, so I play for 20 seconds on my play, and then I get off the field, and now I have time to think about what I'm doing and to kind of recover my thought processes, deal with my stresses and anxiety, and have time sat on the bench thinking about it. Does that make sense? And we know soccer is not like that, right? We step over the line, and everything is different. And your coaches can scream at you as much as they can, and they can give you instructions from the sideline as much as they can. We all know they're not affecting the game as much as your mind is affecting the game when you play. Because when you're over the line, you're on your own. Yes? Would we agree? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, the, the thinking would be, <clears throat> how can we, prior to the game, and at certain points in the game, cope with our stressors to make our performance improve? Because we do know that if stress and anxiety takes you over, psychologically or physiologically, your performance will decrease. So what are the strategies that you can use to in order to increase your performance? That's what we're going to do today. Sound 
okay? All right, so <clears throat> let's think about this. First of all, you've got to understand how your body reacts to the stresses and anxiety. Do you get a physiological response or do you get a cognitive response? Are you one of these people that's in the corner, kind of rubbing your hands, starting to sweat, pacing up and down, standing, stretching, yapping to somebody, can't sit still? Or is the problem in here and you sit in the corner, and this is what I used to do after I'd taken seven or two visits to the restroom when I was playing, sit in the corner and think about what was happening. Make sense? So we've got to think about stress and how we deal with it from two perspectives. So that's what we're going to do today. So, <clears throat> what happens to your body when you are stressed, physiologically speaking? Anybody, any ideas? Your heart rate increases automatically, right? So something must happen to your breathing. Yeah, yeah, it becomes, it increases and it becomes shallow. Now automatically, that is not a good sign. If your breathing increases and, you become, and it becomes shallow, then all of a sudden that's, that's, you know that you are under some kind of stress or some kind of anxiety. Anything else on the physical side? Your hands sweat. Yeah, you might start to get sweaty, you might start to get clammy, you might start to feel sick in your stomach. Okay, you want to go to the restroom. Who are the restroom people here? Yeah, me and you both. I'll go to the restroom, come back, sit in the changing room, go back to the restroom again. Sense. What about the cognitive? How does that affect you? How does that affect you in terms of the cognitive? Yep, Emily? Some people can negative self-talk. Okay, now we will talk about self-talk in one of the sessions and we'll practice self-talk. Okay? If I tell myself I can't do it, then the outcome is likely to be the same. Yes? It's likely to be the same. So what I tell myself to be the truth, in coming the words and out from the mouth, come the heart speaks, and then I start to believe what I'm thinking. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I'm over-processing everything. Make sense? Maybe I'm analyzing everything. And all I'm doing is I'm dragging myself down because I realize that the weight is too much, psychologically speaking, and I can't cope. So let's practice some strategies that will help you to be able to, when you are aware of your uh, stresses, how you can cope with them. Because only then will we be able to perform at the highest level. And I know because I've dealt with the league players for a lot of my professional career. And there's something different about them than the people who just don't quite make it. Okay? Ready to practice? Yes? Okay. So there's two types. If you have a physiological response to stress, it's called somatic anxiety. And if you have a psychological response to stress, then you have something called cognitive anxiety. Now you might know, not know which one you struggle with. It could be both. And so we can use both ways of dealing with it. So, who are the people that cannot sleep? Put your hands up if you have trouble sleeping. Okay, all right, so here are our sleepers. So what happens when you want to go to sleep in the evenings? Let's say it is the evenings rather than the early hours, okay? You want to go to sleep. Have you taken any pharmaceuticals before you want to go to sleep? Is the room dark? Have you eaten just before you want to sleep? Does that make sense? All of these things, they affect the kind of the chemical levels in your brain. So they affect the serotonin levels and the um, dopamine levels. And serotonin and dopamine and melatonin, they all get together and they work in perfect harmony to help you to fall asleep. So if you've taken anything, if you've ingested anything into your body, then what you're doing is you're upsetting that chemical balance. So let's do some exercises. So everybody lay down on the floor. <laughs> All right, make 
sure you're not touching anything like the wall or other people. Okay, let's take your hands out your pockets. Let's put your hands down by your sides. And this is an exercise to help you to deal with cognitive anxiety. This is when your thought processing is giving you such a hard time, you can't sleep and you can't relax. And we're just going to have some meditation. Okay? So, eyes closed. Eyes closed. So hopefully you haven't had anything ridiculous into your body before you've gone to sleep. Because we do know that when you get stressed, you tend to make really bad habits in terms of your diet. Eat too many processed foods. Eat too much junk food. You don't have enough variety in your diet. So now let's give our body an opportunity to just relax. So you want to be in a quiet place. And now you can get in a comfortable position, but I would prefer that you were on your back. And the first thing I want you to do is I would like you to try and breathe from your tummy. Don't breathe from your chest. Breathe from your tummy. So we're having belly breathing. So if I look at you, I should see your belly rise up and down. Okay? And not your chest. script to you. Put your hand on your stomach. And feel your breathing. Just focus on trying to make your hand move. When you breathe, you normally breathe between 10 to 15 cycles a minute, which basically means you inhale and you'll pause a little bit, then you'll exhale and then you'll pause, and then the cycle starts again. <clears throat> when you are undertaking physical exercise or you're heavily stressed, you can breathe up to 60 times a minute. Your breathing will become shallow you'll have issues because you won't be replenishing your brain with the required amount of the books. So this exercise is to make sure that you get enough oxygen to your brain in your breath cycle. Focus only on your breathing. Thoughts should wander, it's okay. We'll bring them back. Slow your breathing down. Focus on your inhale as pure, clean air enters your lungs. Enjoy that feeling. It feels good to breathe so deeply, to fill your lungs so completely. Now focus on the exhale as bad used air leaves your lungs. Enjoy that feeling. Notice how as you exhale slowly and completely, your body begins to sink into the floor. When you inhale, think restore. This is your
your body's way of replenishing itself. The incoming air is nourishing. Take it deeply into your lungs and say to yourself, restore. Every time you inhale, restore. As you exhale, think, relax. Your body naturally sinks into the floor as you breathe out. Breathing out so deeply rid your body of the unused, of the used air, all of your tension, all of your hesitation, and all of your stress. Let yourself breathe out fully, and as you do so, say to yourself, relax. Feel yourself further sink into the floor as you repeat your breathing. Restore. Relax. Restore. Relax. Focus only on your breath, how it feels to fill and empty your lungs, how the air smells, the pleasant dryness in your mouth, the relaxed feelings you experience as you sink further into the floor. Just keep breathing. Keep sinking. Just breathe and sink. Breathe and sink. Now, as we're doing this, we'll have an opportunity to practice this kind of diaphragmatic breathing within our meditation to mimic how we breathe when we sleep. In terms of breath cycles, you might take between two to four breath cycles per minute when you sleep, even though you take 10 to 15 when you are awake. So we're going to try this formula. I want you to pause for as long as you can, and then inhale for four. And after you've inhaled for a count of four, I want you to pause for a count of seven. And then I want you to exhale slowly for a count of eight. I'm going to practice that together. So pause, no breathing. And inhale. One, two, three, four. And pause. Exhale for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And pause. And inhale for four. Two, three, four. Pause. Five, six, seven. Exhale for eight. One, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can do it yourself. You're going to pause, inhale for four, pause for seven, exhale for eight, pause, and start the cycle again. You can do this now in your own time.
whilst you're practicing this kind of breathing, you can also go to a place that you feel comfortable. It might be on a beach. It might be in the mountains, laying on the grass on the hill. It might be on a hammock somewhere. Maybe you can feel the sound of the, or you can feel the wind blowing through your hair, touching your face. So peaceful. Nobody's around. You can finally relax. And every time you breathe, restore. I'd like you to sit up and then just sit quietly and do a little check. David's papers. So, strategy number one, strategy number one to deal with cognitive anxiety is the meditation. Now I also took a strategy with the diaphragmatic breathing, the breath, the belly breathing. That's kind of what that also helps with the somatic. So I kind of mix the somatic and the cognitive together there. So when you go to bed, if you're trouble sleeping, belly breathing, count for four, pause for seven, exhale for eight, pause again. That will help you because you're mimicking the breathing patterns that you do when you are asleep, but you just don't know that you do that when you're asleep because you're asleep. But that's the pattern that your body follows. So you're trying to mimic it. That will help you to fall asleep. Go to the island, go to the mountain, go to the hammock, do whatever you want to help clear your mind of any cognitive stress that you might have. Okay? Make sense? Homework. 20 minutes. Diaphragmatic breathing, if you are, if you pursue it properly, will also help you with the somatic physiology. Okay? That's number one. Now, let me check my notes here. In terms of uh, other practices, we've got things called uh, self-talk, which we'll talk about uh, another time. We've got cognitive reframing, which is incredibly important. Which is about changing the perception of your situation. Changing the perception of how you think about something. Okay? But that's not to say that the problem is still there. It doesn't disappear. The situation is still there. If you're down 2 1 with five minutes to go and you use at a, a point in time some restructuring, some, some cognitive restructuring, you're still going to be losing 2 1. But it's how you perceive your situation to help you deal with. Anxiety. Now you could be thinking to yourself, they're better than us. We've, we've only got five minutes to go. We haven't had a shot on target. I'm not playing well. Or well, you could reframe it to think, we're down to one. We're going to win. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to get it done. Here's an opportunity for us to work together as a team. Does that make sense? So we'll talk about that. That's another way of trying to deal with cognitive anxiety. So now let's go on to the, to the somatic. There's one other thing I want to introduce you to, which is called progressive mus muscle relaxation. So feet on the floor, but comfy in the chair. Hands at the pockets. Hands at the pockets. Let's do some progressive muscle relaxation. OK? Yeah, it's not going to cut. Put your coat on, it's not going to cut. Are you like crisscross? Do you remember that from the remember the old and you remember crisscross? Thanks. Used to wear their their uh jump, jump, whatever the song goes in the okay. So you have a crisscross. So we're gonna do some progressive muscle relaxation. Now this is to deal with when you feel tense. When you feel tense. What we're looking to do is practice some muscle um, relaxation and then we're gonna try and fool our body 
by using a word which triggers the same sensation as though our muscles are relaxed. Make sense? So that's where we're going. <coughs> so you're going to have to do this with me. It seems a little bit silly, but we're going to do it anyway. And it's my gig, so you have to do what I tell you. Okay. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to scrunch up all of the muscles in your face as tight as you can. Scrunch them up. Yep, scrunch up the muscles up. Yep. Do it with me. Do it with me. Scrunch them up. Scrunch them up and hold it. And feel what that tension feels like. Feel what that tension feels like and now relax and let it go. Now, can you tell the difference between how it feels when your face, facial muscles are tense as compared to when they're not tense? Does that make sense? Let's try it again. Everybody. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, scratch up all the muscles in your face, tighten them up, tighten up your muscles in your face, tighten, 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 good, go, go, just do it. Know what that feels like, and now relax. Now we're going to tighten all of the muscles in from our fingertips all the way down to, down, up to, PhD on this exercise, all the way up to our shoulders, and I'll do it with you. Ready? Tense. No, just our arms. Just our arms. Tense as hard as you can. Squeeze as hard as you can. And understand what that feels like. Understand what that feels like. And now relax. Can you feel the difference? Can you feel the difference? Okay. And again, tense. As tight as you can. chest, our abdomen, in our trunk, tighten, 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 your trunk, tighten, and relax. And again, tighten, and relax. And now all the muscles in our legs, all the way down from, from our, all the way down from our butt to our toes. Tighten. Tighten and relax. Tighten and relax. And now our whole body, your entire body, don't worry. I, I've seen these faces before, it's okay. Tighten everything, tighten. You can close your eyes if you're embarrassed. Tighten. Tighten. And relax. And again, tighten. And relax. Okay, now, this is hard. Now we're going to use a word to replace the tension. Okay? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All the muscles in your arms, shoulders, Hands. Now don't do this, but imagine this. Tighten. Feel how tight they feel. And now relax. Tighten. And relax. And now the muscles in your legs. Tighten. Feel the tension. choose a word which describes to you how it feels for your muscles to be relaxed. It could be relaxed, it could be center, it could be focus, whatever it is. Don't tell your partner what your word is, because it's your word. It's your word. Make sense? Make sense? Now, close your eyes again. Imagine your muscles are tight. Let's do the whole body this time. The whole body. Think of that word and think of what that means to you. And try now experience that feeling of muscle relaxing by saying that word. Okay, so you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be tight at all. 
Make sense? What's that word for you? Okay, and you can open your eyes. Make sense? So now it's the word. What is your word? <clears throat> Last uh, two minutes of the game. Um, it's not your winner because then it's just just taking a piss. It's too easy. Okay, um, you're losing. It's 1-0. And you're about to take a penalty. Make sense? You're about to take a penalty. Um, whatever you do, don't change your mind as you're running down. Okay, decide what you're going to do. Turn your back to the keeper. Here's your word. Whatever my word is, I'm feeling, feeling tight. I'm going to do my word. Center. Remind my body to lead, to lose all the tension in my muscles so that I can use correct form and technique. Make sense? If you say center, <laughs> that might be your word, center. That doesn't mean you have, you have to hit the ball down the center. <laughs> That's, it's something different. But we, know, we, we all know, right, if we're nervous when we're taking a penalty, we just smack it as hard as we can straight down the middle. High. But don't use that as your word if you're going to hit it down the center. You know, not the Does that make sense? Cognitive anxiety. Can, uh, you have to meditate. You have to use... Um, Diaphragmatic breathing to help you. We can use self-talk, we can use restructuring, we'll talk a little bit about that. Somatic anxiety, you can use a diaphragmatic breathing. You can just be sat on a chair before the game. Diaphragmatic breathing, just getting everything ready to, to get rid of all those stresses. And you can use progressive muscle, muscular relaxation, where you have a special word, don't tell anybody, that reminds your body what it feels like not to be tense or to be relaxed. That will help you once you start to learn how to cope with your anxiety because it's coming down the pipe whether you like it or not. And we can start to channel it, and we can start to use it, then your performance will increase. Because one thing that we do know is for sure, it doesn't matter how much physical ability you have in your body, this controls it. So therefore, if we're going to spend hours upon hours every week working on the physical side of our game, we should spend some time working on the mental side. So, cognitive, somatic. Handouts for everybody. <coughs> just to kind of remind you. Emily, could you yeah. just uh, distribute those in the way that you see fit? Grab some for your roommates if they're not here, please. <clears throat> okay. And the last thing I want to say to you is this. Let's just have a look at the last paragraph on the second page. Those are some anecdotal things for you to consider. Here's the final thing I want to say to you. These ideas, they do work, but it's not as if well, you've just done them once and that's it. You have to practice these every day because it takes weeks for you to be able to master them. It, take, it takes a long time for us to train the mind as well as train the body. All right, so I'll come in another time and talk about uh, self-talk and thought stopping, and I'll come in another time after that and talk about mental rehearsal and imagery. Okay, is that cool? Is that all right? Is there any questions about anything? About the, the mental stuff, about the soccer background, anything like that? Any questions?